Um, so what I've got here is uh, a very elegant piece of technology. And uh, I don't know if any of you uh, came across a book in the early 70s called The Secret Life of Plants. Yep. Fantastic book. Fantastic book. They did, did, did speak good about furniture in here. They also speak about uh, a guy named uh, Cleve Baxter, who uh, in his time was actually still today. He's 85 today. There's still the Baxter Institute of Polygraph in California. And he was a CIA polygraph expert. He was the, the number one go-to guy for polygraphs. And he lived, breathed polygraphing. And that's why he was with the CIA. They needed to know. So one day in his lab, just in a spare moment, on a lark, on a whim, he took his polygraph equipment and hooked it up to the plant that was there in his office. He's kind of, oh, given the readings, you know, as the paper kind of goes out. He goes, oh, it's, it's picking up that there's electromagnetic processing in that plant. Well, you know, not a great big revelation in itself. There's the understood idea that, you know, a polygraph works on the fact that there's electromagnetism moving through all of us even uh, an ECG measuring your heart rate or an, uh, an electroencephalogram for your head measuring brain waves. It's, it's understood we have an electrical component to our physiology. So then he was standing back and he thought to himself for a minute, well, what if I uh, reach into my pocket, pull out my lighter and go and just like burn the... And as he had the thought, the thing just went as he had the thought. Right then and there, his complete his life completely changed. His career completely changed. The course of his entire life totally stopped. He was in the moment of a revelation, of a perception, of some unspeakable awareness going on within that plant, and as readily identified in the polygraph. Now, a lot of people might say, oh, there could have been a solar flare, or maybe there was an electrical outage in the next building, or something like that. Well, Cleve Baxter then, from that moment, dedicated the next 40 years of his life until today and ongoing to the research of that. Getting very specific into the perception, the ability of plants to perceive, to be able to be sensitive to electromagnetic influence. So the idea of a plant picking up an electromagnetic signal from a human being has been around for many years. That's actually what the whole book, Secret Life of Plants, is about. And it's looking through history. There's a guy in Bengal named Bose who was also a fantastic researcher into the field of trying to uh, create the correct instrumentation to be able to capture these very micro signals that plants are giving to their environment. There's a numerous analogies and stories throughout native traditions around the world, indigenous people, about their knowledge and wisdom, couched within their knowledge and wisdom of their environment is an understanding and an acceptance that there is intelligence within plants. So Native North Americans have it. The Maori in, in uh, Australia have it. It's popular through almost, I don't know if there's an indigenous people on the planet that don't have some level of mysticism about plants. We call it mysticism. They call it reality. Well, coming from a Western point of view, the research into the energetic relationship between human and plant has been going on for 40 years since that moment of uh, Baxter. And there was inklings of it before. The effect actually became coined as the Baxter effect, where you think something and a plant responds, and that response is detectable. 
of the detection of plants to human electromagnetic radiation. Uh, a friend of mine, based on uh, inspiration from the secret life of plants, uh, an electrical engineer named Martin Pini, uh created this called the Floranium that has a, um, a sensor that gets attached to a leaf that's 400 times more sensitive than an ECG. It's got a little uh, microprocessor in there and uh, numerous kinds of, there's a little software or firmware package inside of it that's calibrated so that the signals, electromagnetic signals that a plant feels or senses get amplified and displayed into that light. So as a person approaches the plant, and I guess I want you to be able to see that. Now here's the thing, there is within this room, like I was saying, so many different influences. There's the temperature in the air, there's the shift, change of temperature in the air, hot, cold, the cold draft coming in, there's the uh, amount of humidity that's in this room, there's all the TV and radio signals coming through. So this is going to be responding continuously to a certain natural ebbing and flowing of energy that's moving through the plant. And then there's its own processing also. But <laughs> the point being here is that over time and with exposure, you can start to uh, see that your proximity does influence it considerably. And just to adjust the conductivity of the plant itself, we'll see this what happens is it's adjusted to a sensitivity within a very fine range of electrical signal. If it's below that range, it pulses green. And if the signal is above that range, it pulses red. So that means it's not giving you a reading. But when it's in the range that it's able to process at about 0 0.08 microamps, it will then give a reading like this one over here. Now the question is, as I approach that plant, what is the interaction between the plant and myself that would be causing an electromagnetic change to take place? What part of me is it responding to? And this is where it gets interesting.